Hi, Phyllis here. This morning we're going to make some pizza, homemade pizza. And we'll be making our own crust and really that's the most important thing to do with a pizza that you have really good crust. So here are the ingredients we're going to use. We want to use all-purpose flour, about one and a half cups. We'll need salt and we'll need a little oil and about a, I'm going to guess and say a, a teaspoon and a half of active dry yeast, about a teaspoon of sugar, and of course we need water. Now this water, uh, we use filtered water because the yeast do not like chlorine. They, they tend to not produce as fast if you use the chlorine in the water. So this is distilled water. Okay. We're going to get started now, and the very first thing that we'll need to do is prove out our yeast. And the way we do that is we have the water at about 100 to 110 degrees, no hotter than that. It should feel just barely warm to your finger, or maybe a little more than barely warm. Kind of like baby formula, you don't want it too hot. We're going to dump our yeast in to about three-fourths of a cup of water and about a teaspoon of sugar because we want to be able to feed them. And then we're just going to stir that up, get it dissolved. It won't take but just a second. Just dissolve the sugar and the yeast in there. And they'll start reproducing right away. And that's what we're looking for. That's what makes the holes in the bread and makes the texture of the bread and gives it a great taste. Just keep stirring it until you get it all dissolved. And again, you don't need to just use tap water. If you don't have access to distilled water or filtered water, what you can do is leave the uh, water sitting out on the counter overnight and let the uh, chlorine evaporate because obviously chlorine is intended to kill bacteria, but it will also kill yeast. Now they do overcome it a little bit, but if you want your bread really good, and your, in this case our uh, crust on the pizza to be really good, you want to do everything you can to encourage the yeast to reproduce. All right, we're going to let that sit there for about five to ten minutes, and we'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, my yeast is very much alive. See all the foam there? It's definitely reproducing. So now I'm going to pour one and a half cups of plain flour in my bowl. And I'm going to go ahead and dump in the three-fourths of a cup of water that has the yeast and the sugar in it. I'm going to use about a teaspoon of salt, there you go, and about a tablespoon of regular canola oil. There you go. Now, we started out with one and a half cups of the flour, and we're going to add more flour in just a minute to form the kind of ball that we're looking for. See, I've got it all mixed up now. Now, I'm going to use more flour. So that's probably, I don't know, about half a cup more. And dump it on there, and now I'm going to have to use my hands. Of course, obviously make sure your hands are clean. I'm just going to mix that all up and form it into a ball. It should feel warm to your hands. And the reason you use your hands is because your hands are warm also and the yeast really like that. In fact, they will actually grow on your hand and under your fingernails. So when you get through mixing this all up, you probably need to you know, clean out your fingernails and wash your hands with antibacterial to kill the yeast. At least that's what I do. All right, so we started out 
with one and a half cups of plain flour. We added about another half cup. And you see it's taken it all up. So now I'm going to add just a little more flour. And it will depend on your flour. If you're using regular bread flour, you probably wouldn't need quite as much as what I'm using. Now, I could not find the bread flour at the store this time except in a King Arthur bag that was two pounds and it was two dollars and ninety nine cents and I just decided against it. I just am not going to pay that price. So I'll have to wait till I can find a five pound bag. But anyway, this this uh, regular unbleached all-purpose flour from King Arthur works almost as good as the bread flour. Now you see what I'm doing? This is kneading. You don't have to do a whole lot of it. You'll you'll be able to feel with your hands how the the flour is just I don't know, just kind of feels good, really. See how it's all mixed in there? And kneading. Well, I need a little more flour, I believe. Just a little more. If it feels sticky to your hands, you can always just put a little more. So I'll put just a little more in there, see? And this is kneading when you just turn it over and over on itself. You don't want it to be too stiff. See? And what you're doing when you're kneading is incorporating air into it. So I'm really, uh, will end up needing this about five minutes, probably ten at the very most. You can also knead like this. See, I'm just stretching it out and see where it starts looking like a rubber ball, really. And see, that still feels sticky to me. Pulls away a little bit. So that means I'm going to put it in flour a little more. Incorporate more of that flour into it. So all together, we probably used three-fourths of a cup of water and let me guess and say maybe two and a fourth to two and a third cups of plain all-purpose flour. Let's see, it's looking better now. Just keep turning it over. That's what I'm doing on the back side. I'm pushing my fingers in there. And when it starts sticking to my fingers, I just dip it down in the flour again. Turn it over and over. And it feels very soft, see? It also feels alive. And that's what the yeast is. It's very much alive. And it's now eating the gluten in the flour. And of course it ate the sugar that I put in the water. So that's what makes the water and the yeast foam up when you put it in the water. In other words, you activate it as soon as you get it in the water. Okay, that looks about right. See, it's just formed into a smooth ball. And what you're really doing when you're kneading and what I'm doing by pulling it back is you're stretching out and developing the gluten that's in the flour. Okay, that looks like about it. So that took maybe, what, I don't know, five minutes. So... Now, I've got me in just another plain bowl, and I'm going to put some oil in that bowl, maybe about a tablespoon. And that's so the yeast will not stick to the side of the glass. I'm going to first turn the top side down, and move it all around, and I'm, what I'm actually doing is greasing the bowl and the top side of the yeast. Now, I'm going to turn it over. Leave it as much in a ball as you can. And now I'm going to move it over, excuse me, to my hot pad. I've got my hot pad on high. I'll probably turn it down to medium. I'm going to cover this with saran wrap and let it double in bulk, which will probably take maybe, I don't know, an hour at the most. Okay, so I'll be back when it doubles in bulk. All right, we're back and our uh, pizza dough has doubled in bulk. Now we're going to just punch it down like this. Literally just punch it down. And what you're doing is you're going to let that rest for about five minutes because of course the yeast are tired because they've been working hard. So we're going to let them rest about five minutes and while that's happening 
I am pre-cooking my red and green bell peppers and my purple onion. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I don't, because I put so much on there, it will make the pizza watery. So I'm getting a lot of the moisture evaporated out of both the peppers and the purple onions. Now this is about two medium um, purple onions and one red bell, uh, bell pepper and one green bell pepper. So we'll be back in about five minutes. Okay, my pizza, has, uh, pizza dough has finished resting and I'm going to put it on the pan now. Now I've thoroughly greased my pizza pan with some Crisco. Even up on the edges, you want to make sure you grease that part too. Okay. We're going to dump it on there. See how nicely it came out? And my hands both being greasy, I'm going to just smooth it out right over the pan. Try to make a little lip on it. Okay, I'm going to try to make sure you don't get any big air bubbles or any holes in it because your um, pizza sauce will leak out to the bottom of it if, if that happens. So I want to be real careful about that. Okay, we've got a little edge on it now. Now I've got my heating pad on medium and what I'm going to do is cut it down to low and let the pan sit directly on the heating pad. See that? I'm going to let it sit directly on there. Now I'm going to put a little bit of oil on my hands and kind of smooth that out onto this crust. And the reason you do that, all right, now watch this, just a little, little bit. There you go. Put it on both my hands. Just kind of like, think of it as putting lotion on your little crust. And the reason you do this is because you don't want your sauce sinking down into the crust and making it soggy. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is different, I think, probably than most people. I'm going to actually go ahead and put the sauce on and really what the sauce does is it helps keep it more uh, at an even temperature. Uh, it, uh, yeast doesn't like to be chilled and so when you put that sauce on at this time you really keep it from getting chilled. Now I'm using Classico Tuscan inspired olive and garlic spaghetti sauce if I can get it open. Anyway, there's what I'm using. Of course, you can use any spaghetti sauce. Uh, will work just fine. So I'm going to have to uh, get something and get, get the lid off this bottle and I'll be back in a little while. Okay, I finally got the top off of that. It took some work though. So I'm going to put the sauce on now. I'm not going to put just a whole lot and just spread it out. Now this has got olives in it. And of course garlic. this sit here for about another 20 minutes and while that's I'm waiting for it to rise a little bit and the way you'll know is you can touch your little crust and if the indent stays in there you know it's ready but you'll be able to see it is puffed up more so we'll be back in a little while I wanted to show you my oh these are two purple onions 
one red bell pepper and one green bell pepper and I cooked them and tried to evaporate a lot of the oil and now I'm draining them because I don't want my pizza to be watery but I want to be able to put a bunch of stuff on it. So we'll be back when we're ready to assemble this. Okay, our dough has been rising for about 30 minutes and now I'm going to assemble everything. First thing I'm going to do is put some Parmesan cheese over this sauce. And that's partly for the taste and partly to help dry out the sauce a little bit. So that's going to be my first layer. And then, to make it a little tastier, I'm going to use some Italian seasoning. See that? Just a little bit. Right on top. And I'm going to also use just a little bit of garlic powder. Just a little bit. Garlic powder, not garlic salt now. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is sprinkle my peppers on. Now, I used a paper towel over top of these to dry them out a little bit because if they're too wet, it will make your pizza watery. So I'm going to just sprinkle those all over. Both the purple onions that I pre-cooked and the peppers because we like a lot of stuff on our pizza. You know, some people put fried hamburger on it and I've done that before too. But today we're going a little more vegetarian. I am going to put some turkey pepperoni and it'll be the first time I've tried that and I really am hoping it's going to be very good. Okay, see that's a lot, lot on there. And see, if you put that many onions and peppers on that were not pre-cooked, and I like to say dewatered, then it would make your pizza go way, way too moist, and there'd be little things of water floating on the top of it. Okay. And I had these little olives left from when I made pizza before I froze them because I didn't want to throw them away. Now, the, the sauce has got some olives in it, too. Okay. Now I'm ready to put my cheese on. This is two cups of mozzarella cheese. And this is going to be a, a very thick pizza. And hopefully, I'll have a lower crust that's going to be crispy. And that's going to be because as soon as I take it out of the oven, I'm going to put it on this little rack that uh, my husband cut me a couple of boards and I put my little cooling racks on top of that. Okay, now this is what we're going to try. Turkey, okay, because it's 70% less fat. Now if it's the regular pepperoni, what I do is pre-cook that in the oven so it won't be so greasy and then drain it and uh, put it on some paper towels just so it won't be so greasy. And we're not going to use a whole lot of the pepperoni. Well, it might look like it's a lot to some people. But if you like a lot of meat on yours and you want to fry out some Italian sausage and some uh, hamburger, you'll need to make sure you drain that and kind of put paper towels on top of it and squish all the grease out of it. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do, these are fresh mushrooms. I'm going to put them right on top. Now, we like a lot, lot of mushrooms and they are very high in protein. So I slice these myself because I want them sliced really thin. And all the pepperoni and the uh, mushrooms will kind of help shield the cheese from the high temperature that this pizza has to cook at. And we're going to start it out at 450 degrees in the middle of the oven. And then I'm going to turn it down to about 425 and cook it for probably about 25 minutes. And depending on your oven, of course, you'd want to adjust that. Okay, we've got it all assembled now and we're ready to put it in the oven. We'll be back when it's done. 
Okay, the pizza is done, and I'm going to show you what I do to keep the bottom crust crisp. I'm just going to do like that and let it sit there for a few minutes to cool on this rack. Uh, it's about an inch and a half up from the surface of the top of the stove, uh, just so that the uh, bottom crust will remain crispy. So I'll be right back in a few minutes and show you how I cut that. Okay, this is cool just a little bit, and I'm going to slide it back on the pan and show you how I cut it. Slide it right back on the pan. I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm going to cut this half into three pieces. This half also. So this will be enough for us to have two pieces and then we'll have them for another meal. I'll go ahead and freeze it and have it for another meal probably next week. Now, you can't cut the edges with this little turn cutter. So what I do is just take the scissors, go around and cut that edge. Make sure it's cut all the way through. And there you have it. Now, I, if you leave it in the pan, the bottom crust won't remain crispy, so I'm just going to scoop it right back out again and let it sit on the rack. There you have it. And I would say that um, the, uh, with all the ingredients, uh, the cost to make this pizza was probably under $5, and it will provide us with two meals. So we'll eat two pieces today, and then... Um, two pieces another time so and then one and a half of the other piece so anyway there's my frugal pizza and I hope you'll try it and enjoy it and here's the recipe again use a one and a half cups plain flour three-fourths a cup of water one teaspoon of sugar one and a half teaspoons of yeast or two packs, one tablespoon of oil, and then three-fourths to one cup additional flour while you're kneading it. And there you have it.